These classic movie stars were some of the biggest names in Hollywood. When the cameras stopped rolling for good, these are the places where they were finally laid to rest. Much like Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn, James Dean's face can be found plastered on all kinds of memorabilia from Hollywood's golden age. Unlike Hepburn and Monroe, however, Dean only filmed three feature films before his untimely death at 24. Dean was born in 1931 in Marion, Indiana, yet spent his teenage years bouncing between California and his hometown. He stayed in the Golden State to major in theater at the University of California, Los Angeles, but by 1951, he was off to New York. After appearing on Broadway's The Immoralist in 1954, he snagged a screen test at Warner Brothers for East of Eden, a role that catapulted him into Hollywood. While James Dean will forever be remembered for his leading role in Rebel Without a Cause, sadly, he never got a chance to see it, or his final movie, Giant, released. On September 30, 1955, the actor got into a fatal car crash with his Porsche 550 Spider. His remains are buried in Fairmount Park Cemetery in Grant County, Indiana. It's hard to find someone who can't recognize the melodic crooning of old Blue Eyes himself, Frank Sinatra. The New Jersey-born singer was also loved by the silver screen. Having acted in some Hollywood classics such as High Society alongside fellow musical legend Bing Crosby, when Sinatra's music career began to falter in the early 50s, acting was his saving grace and ultimately garnered him the attention he needed to make a comeback. He received an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his role in 1953's From Here to Eternity, and two years later, he was nominated for the Best Actor in a Leading Role category for his turn in The Man with the Golden Arm. On May 14, 1998, Frank Sinatra died at the age of 82. He was buried in the Desert Memorial Park close to Palm Springs, California. According to Time, he went to the great beyond with a bottle of Jack Daniels and a pack of Camel cigarettes tucked into his suit. Marilyn Monroe needs no introduction. The woman born Norma Jean Mortensen is one of the world's most legendary sex symbols and an immensely successful movie star whose movies grossed hundreds of millions of dollars. Discovered by a photographer, Monroe began her career as a model in the 1940s. She later dyed her hair her signature blonde, changed her name to her now iconic moniker, and signed her first movie contract in 1946. What's the big day tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm on television. By the end of the 50s, Monroe was a box office hit, having starred in classics such as 1953's Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and 1959's Some Like It Hot. However, just because stars shine bright in Tinseltown doesn't mean they can't burn out just as fast. Just as the 60s rolled around, Monroe was struggling in her personal life, and her box office draw was floundering. In 1962, Marilyn Monroe died of a drug overdose at just 36. Monroe is buried in Los Angeles, California, in the Westwood Village Memorial Cemetery. Her ex-husband, Joe DiMaggio, organized the funeral, and three times a week, for 20 years after her untimely death, the baseball legend had red roses delivered to her simple grave. In 1992, the late Hugh Hefner, who had Monroe as Playboy's first playmate, bought a tomb next to the actor so that he could spend eternity beside her. Ah, no. He's looking at you, kid. It's hard to think of Humphrey Bogart without remembering his iconic performance in 1942's Casablanca. But as one of the biggest movie stars of his time, he brought his inimitable presence to dozens of other projects throughout his career. The actor, who started off as a Broadway star in the 20s, became one of Hollywood's leading men in the 1940s, with hits such as The Maltese Falcon and To Have and Have Not. As Bogey himself once claimed, there was a period in American history when you couldn't pick up a goddamn magazine without seeing my kisser in it. Diagnosed with esophageal cancer in 1956, Humphrey Bogart died the following year, on January 14, 1957. In a nod to To Have and Have Not, his wife and co-star Lauren Bacall placed a gold whistle with the inscription, If you want anything, just whistle, with his cremated remains in an urn. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. The actor's final resting place is in a secluded garden in Glendale, California's Forest Lawn Memorial Park. One of the most enduring stars of the golden age of Hollywood, 
Elizabeth Taylor had a whopping 79 credits to her name at the time of her death in 2011. Unlike some of her peers, Taylor was notorious for remaining true to who she was throughout her career, refusing to pluck her eyebrows or dye her jet black hair. 1963's Cleopatra is, by far, Liz Taylor's most memorable role. On the set of that movie, she met Richard Burton, whom she married for a decade, divorced, then married again only to split less than a year later. And just as popular as she was on camera, Taylor and Burton's relationship also made headlines for their rollicking, hard-drinking lifestyles. When Taylor died on March 23, 2011, of congestive heart failure, she was buried at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. As her son Michael told ABC News, her legacy will never fade. Elegant and doe-eyed Audrey Hepburn will forever be remembered as Holly Golightly, the flighty lead in Hollywood's 1961 movie adaptation of Truman Capote's novella Breakfast at Tiffany's. Her delicate looks and soft-spoken demeanor were refreshing in Hollywood at the time, with Humphrey Bogart once declaring of her, You take the Marilyn Monroe's and the Terry Moore's, and you know just what you're going to get every time. With Audrey, it's kind of unpredictable. Born in Brussels and growing up in Nazi-occupied Holland, Hepburn left for England in her teens and eventually made it all the way to Broadway. By 1953, she starred in Roman Holiday alongside Gregory Peck, taking home her first Oscar for Best Actress in a Leading Role. By the 70s, Hepburn stopped acting as regularly, turning her sights to humanitarian efforts. Hepburn is buried in a small cemetery in Toloshina, Switzerland, the small village she lived in from 1963 until her death. Judy Garland is one of Hollywood's greatest legends of the screen, but it's no secret that behind the camera, she lived a tragic life. Her mother, a success-oriented stage mom, was dubbed by the star herself as the real Wicked Witch of the West. And before Garland even turned 10, she was feeding her pills, both to sleep and to keep her energy levels high. Substance abuse problems would follow her for the rest of her life. Beyond The Wizard of Oz, she starred in movies like 1944's Meet Me in St. Louis and 1954's A Star is Born, performing until her untimely death at the age of 47 in 1969 from an accidental overdose. Garland reportedly did not die wealthy and owed a staggering $4 million to the IRS. She was initially buried at the Ferncliff Cemetery in New York, but in 2017, it was reported that her family had her moved to Hollywood where she was laid to rest with honors in the Judy Garland Pavilion, a mausoleum at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Los Angeles. Known for her sultry good looks and throaty voice, Lauren Bacall was a quintessential glamour girl of Hollywood's golden age. Born Betty Joan Persky, her career took off in the early 40s when she found success as a model, posing for Harper's Bazaar in 1943. It's then that she was spotted by Nancy Hawks, the wife of film director Howard Hawks. The star's powerful presence shot to the top of the A-list almost immediately. She found success with her first big screen role, 1944's To Have and Have Not, opposite Humphrey Bogart. It wasn't just professional triumph that Bacall snagged with that role, however. She also won over the heart of Bogey himself, who at the time was a married man. The pair wed on May 21, 1945, and stayed together until his death in 1957. Bacall died on August 12, 2014, at the age of 89. Like her husband, she was buried in the Garden of Memory at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. Clark Gable will forever be remembered as the mustachioed heartthrob uttering one of cinema's most classic yet cruel exit lines in 1939's Gone with the Wind. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Although Gable wasn't conventionally attractive by the standards of his era, he was still dubbed the King of Hollywood thanks to a 1938 national poll. Gable's rise to the A-list was an interesting one that came by way of his first wife. According to the Los Angeles Times, the actor's better half, Josephine Dillon, ran an acting clinic where she would coach stage actors in the skills they needed to transition to making movies. It was through Dylan that Gable truly perfected his acting chops, and after acting in 1931's The Painted Desert, MGM offered him a contract. The rest, as they say, was history, and by the end of the year, Gable had established himself as a leading man. Clark Gable died on November 16, 1960, at the age of 59, 
after suffering from two heart attacks. Like many of his classic movie star peers, he was buried at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. While Marlena Dietrich's image was carefully crafted like many of her industry peers, she was nothing like Hollywood had seen before. Born in Berlin, Germany, the future Touch of Evil star knew she was interested in acting as early as her teens. By the late 20s, Dietrich made herself a part of film history by appearing in Germany's first talkie, Der Blau Engel, in 1930. It was shot again in English using the same cast, and thus set Dietrich on the map in America too. Dietrich is remembered as one of Tinseltown's greatest stars due to her voice and alluring charisma. As author Amy Lawrence explains for the Criterion Collections, Dietrich and von Sternberg in Hollywood, Dietrich was labeled as a bad girl, an unconventional antithesis of an American girl that added spice to her roles. The Morocco actor died in Paris on May 6, 1992. According to Lonely Planet, she was buried in Stadischer Friedhof Dry, a small cemetery in Berlin with a modest plot. In terms of Hollywood royalty, Grace Kelly may actually top that list because she quite literally left the bright lights of Tinseltown to become a full-fledged princess. Prior to becoming Grace of Monaco, Grace Kelly was one of Alfred Hitchcock's many muses, starring in Dial M for Murder, Rear Window, and To Catch a Thief. What's more, the Philadelphia-born star was also an Oscar winner, taking home an Academy Award for her role in 1954's The Country Girl opposite Bing Crosby. A mere two years later, Grace gave up her life in Hollywood after meeting Prince Renier III of Monaco, whom she married in an elaborate ceremony on April 19, 1956. Tragically, Grace Kelly's life was cut short on September 13, 1982, after she died in a car crash. Per UPI, the Monaco royal family buried the star in a private ceremony at the Cathedral of Monaco. Quite possibly the most iconic child star to ever grace Hollywood's silver screen, Shirley Temple is legendary. Throughout her film career, which spanned from the mid-30s all the way to the late 40s, Temple completed nearly 60 different movies, all before the age of 22. Retiring from filmmaking in her 20s, Temple avoided falling into a spiral that sometimes plagues former child stars. Instead, Temple turned to politics working in the State Department as an ambassador to Ghana and Czechoslovakia, among other roles, taking the name Shirley Temple Black after her husband, Charles Black. It must be hard for an awful lot of people to take Shirley Temple seriously. Uh, but Shirley Temple Black, I think they are. Shirley Temple died on February 10, 2014, at the age of 85. She was buried in the Alta Mesa Memorial Park in Palo Alto, California. In 1941, Orson Welles released Citizen Kane. Today, it is considered by many cinephiles as the greatest movie ever made. Welles' ascent to the A-list began at the age of 19 after the young actor made his Broadway debut with Romeo and Juliet. From the stage, he turned to radio, running a weekly theater show on CBS, where, in 1938, Welles aired his adaptation of H.G. Wells' novel The War of the Worlds. With Hollywood studios suddenly zeroing in on the 24-year-old genius, Wells signed a $225,000 contract with film company RKO in 1940, promising total creative control for him to direct, write, and produce two films, the first of which was Citizen Kane. On October 10, 1985, Wells died from a heart attack in Los Angeles. Per AP, two years later, his daughter held a ceremony burying Wells' ashes on a farm in Malaga, Spain, a request he made in his will. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about classic movie stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.